Okay, let's continue our discussion of IP version 4 addresses by talking about private addresses. Now, the vast majority of IP version 4 addresses are public. And by public, I mean they can be, they can cross the internet. People can talk from one network to another network through the internet. That's public addressing. If we use private blocks of addresses, we cannot access the internet. However, the private blocks of addresses are perfect for a company that wants to create a network and doesn't and only has one public address. They can use private addressing to their heart's content. Now there are certain um, restrictions on private addresses. There are only certain blocks that are available. One of the blocks is 10.0.0.0 .0 .0 through 10.255.255.255. That translates to network 10.0.0.0 slash 8. Now's a good time to go back to your little lecture on prefixes and understand how this network can actually include everything from here to here. Okay, so those are these private addresses. I could address this guy as 10.0.0.1, 10.0.0.2, 10.0.0.3, 10.0.0.4, and 10.0.0.5. Remember that these addresses, though, cannot leave the router. They, can, they are not a routable address. So we have to do something else, which we'll talk about in a minute. Now, let's say we had uh, this guy over here in his company. He wanted to create a private network. He could also use a 10.0 or a 10. whatever type of network addressing scheme. It doesn't matter. The, anybody can use these in any way they see fit. The only thing you got to remember, again, not routable. So this guy, though, he decides he's going to use an address block that goes from um, this set, 172.16.0.0 through 172.31.255.255. That can be written as this block of addresses. 172.16.0.0 slash 12. Okay? Again, you need to go back and verify that this is actually represented by all these addresses. Okay? So he could use, let's say, network 172.16, um, I don't know, dot 4.1. 172.16.4.2, 172.16.4.3, okay? He can address them in the 172 scheme. Again, not routable. He could have also used 10. He could have used 10.0.0.1. He could have used the exact same address as that guy over there. Now, we did say that every address on the Internet has to be unique. Why can I have this network have a device 10.0.0.1 and that network have a device 10.0.0.1? Because we're not on the internet. These addresses are not routable. I can name these anything I want. So we have two blocks so far. Let's look at the third block of private addresses we can do. Third block of private addresses we can do is 192.168. Dot zero dot zero through one ninety two whoops dot one sixty eight dot two fifty five dot two fifty five. Okay, that's saying the same thing as one ninety two dot one sixty eight dot zero dot zero slash sixteen. I'm using a prefix of sixteen here. So these are my three uh, private address blocks that I can use. These you need to memorize. 10.0.0.0 slash 8. 172.16.0.0 slash 12. 
AM 192.168.0.0 slash 16. Okay? Here's what they represent. 172 is all of these addresses. The 192 block is all of these addresses. And the 10.0.0.0 is all of these addresses. Again, and I can never say this enough, they are private. They are not allowed to go out onto the internet. Well, that's kind of strange in a way. I've got three groups of people here that can't communicate with each other. They can't leave their own networks to get out to the internet. It's not allowed. The addresses they have don't allow them to get to the internet. So what can we do? Well, there is a service that my router can provide for me called Network Address Translation. I can use NAT. And we're going to see NAT in a later course. But Network Address Translation allows my router to take a private address from a user, change it to a public address that I have, and use the public address in communicating with the internet. When the replies come back from the internet to that public address, he looks and see, sees who he associated that public address with, what private address, and then he can make sure the information gets to the right, the right person. So that's what we do. Network address translation allows borrowing of a public address for a temporary period of time to associate it with a private address so that that private address can communicate on the internet. Now, there's one other group of um, addresses I want to mention. Make sure you get copy of these down, especially these three. These three blocks right here. Those are the private addresses. Write that down. Now, there's one more little group of addresses I want to cover very quickly. And I just erased that, so if you didn't write it down yet, uh, hit rewind and go back and watch this little video again. The whole purpose of these little videos is to provide you with some information without you having to spend a whole lot of time concentrating on it. Short, sweet, little groups of information. Okay, so go back and rewind it if you didn't write that down. But there is one more set of addresses. If our devices get their addressing from a DHCP server, Dynamic Host Control Program Protocol, if we provide their addresses to them, they need to be able to have access to that server. Let's say there's a server over here, and this is our DHCP server. When this computer comes online, he sends a request to that server and says, hey, I need an IP address. I need a lot of information, but at least send me an IP address. So he gets an IP address. Now, if we have it set up to use local addressing, let's say we're using the 10 network, he could get his address 10.0.0.1. When he comes on, 10.0.0.2. That's how it's supposed to work. And it works very well, usually. But now let's say that we're sitting here, and for some reason, that link breaks. Now I've got a computer that comes online. He goes and he says, hey, I need an IP address. Nobody home. Nobody home to give him an IP address. So if he's running Windows, He's going to use a little service called APIPA. APIPA stands for Automatic Private IP Addressing. Again, Automatic Private IP Addressing. Windows uses this facility to give an address to, to anybody coming up that can't get an address. He gives them an address from this group. 169.254.0.0 through 169.254.255.255. Or if we just want to use the network designation, 169.254.0.0 slash 16. Again, if you're having problems with these prefixes, Go back and practice that. 
there is a little mini lecture on using prefixes. You need to understand this and what it means on the left side of the fence and what it means on the right side of the fence. Okay, so this is this is the other type of addressing I wanted to introduce you to. APIPA. APIPA, yeah. <laughs> um, this I know works this way with the Windows operating system, and I'm sure there's other operating systems that will supply an IP address if there's no configuration vehicle in place. So what we've learned, private addresses, the private address um, strings, strings of addresses, if you will, 10.0.0.0, 172.16.0.0, and what was down here, 192.168.0.0. Go back, review this, make sure you write down all this information. Be sure that you can tell the difference between a private address and a public address, and understand what API PA does for us.